Welcome to Season 2 of Ideology, the Industrial Design Podcast. My name is Wojtek Hołysz and here I pick the brains of product development experts. So you probably know that you just can't ask ChatGPT for a good prompt for mid-journey and call it a day when it comes to designing products. This simply doesn't work. Not that way at least. But it can work for some specific stages or tasks that you will have in front of you during your product development process. And today, Anita Rogoja, a product designer and researcher here at MindSellers, sat down together with me and Rafał Piłat, our CEO, to talk about how they use generative AI in their product development process. Let's dive in. Anita, let's jump right into it. Do you use AI tools in your work? I do. I do. uh, And I use them to a limited extent, to be honest, uh, because I find them most useful in the pre-design phase. So uh, the creative, the inspiring or uh, researching phase. Mm, For example, while I do research, I can um, jump towards more specific fields more easily uh, while I'm using ChatGPT, because uh, with that I can quite fast collect a lot of samples uh, about different subjects in my research. So that's uh, quite, quite useful. I also use uh, AI tools while um, inspiring myself because, for example, in Midjourney I can create some wild mashups. So let's say that uh, we are creating the vacuum cleaner, Apple-style vacuum cleaner. cleaner. So uh, I can create some inspiration uh, with fast mashups. They won't be industrial grade designs, but they can lead me toward uh, making some new and interesting forms by well, myself. They're meant to be inspiration, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, how about you? Yeah, remixes are cool, <laughs> although I did get funny results uh, trying to uh, get a um, calculator with, uh, designed by Apple. Uh, okay. So I remixed calculator with a text prompt and all I got was uh, Apple-shaped calculator as a result. So, okay. Yeah, but overall <laughs> this is a great tool because obviously it can generate pretty quickly a large number of inspirations. As, so I treat this as a starting point to when looking for an interesting shape or something like this. Uh, well, I also use ChatGPT, uh, which is uh, which has many use cases for me as well. And uh, also use Cloud AI, uh, which is a competitor to ChatGPT. Uh, what I like about it is that you can actually upload a pretty uh, large amount of your uh, starting material. Uh, cool. So this is cool because you can work on a specific subject. So you can um, uh, upload a part of book and just uh, work on the text of the book or just uh, report and just work it out uh, from then. So this is a pretty good tool as well. And in terms of creative um, tools, uh, I use Mm. Stable Diffusion. Uh, I use it a lot for uh, beefing up uh, our 3D renders. Oh, yeah. Especially cool, those cool environmental ones, which we try to reach uh, photo grade, let's say, material. And uh, we can then quickly um, generate um, highly realistic, um, um, fo- photorealistic uh, pictures of people using our, let's say, um, designs in uh, real environments yeah. using stable diffusion. And this, this uh, rises the level of the... Uh, well, the fidelity of the render uh, pretty high. And uh, what else? Um, oh, yeah, uh, I've never been good at sketching. That was never my uh, forte. And uh, that's why I <laughs> I use uh, Stable Diffusion to, uh, well, to sometimes generate sketches from my 3D models because those... Believe it or not, this is sometimes required to yeah. work the other way around. So this is the tool that I use because it saves me a lot of time. So you start with making the 3D model and then reverse engineer it into a sketch? <laughs> uh, yes, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's uh, very helpful while making the marketing materials and uh, all of the little graphic work we have to do sometimes. That's, uh, that's a lot of help, I guess. Yeah, we had a case recently where we had to generate a pretty uh, significant amount of sketches. And it turned out that the best way and the fastest way was actually to generate uh, those sketches from screenshots from SolidWorks. Okay. So that was uh, a very good use case for us where we could speed up uh, the process significantly. That's amazing how uh, 
uh, apart from the obvious um, methods of using AI tools like generating images or inspiration or um, assisting research, uh, it can be simply used to speed up a process like what, what you just mentioned or there are also tools for, for example, increasing a frame rate of a video when mm -hmm. you are rendering animations for your clients. Mm -hmm. Then you can just render them at half speed and at half resolution, and you can then scale it up, which is a lot, a lot faster mm -hmm. and can still generate great results. That's true. And for research or marketing, there are really cool tools for uh, Im impersonating or uh, uh, trying to fake uh, audience uh, um, tests like your personas where you can do tests with specific audience, which is AI generated and which mm -hmm. reacts in a specific type of a role sort of way. Sort of simulation, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's a lot of as, uh, assisting sort of uh, uh, mm -hmm. tools. Um, what about, because uh, you started with sort of like uh, the phase, which is before actual design work. Like you've mentioned research, you've mentioned marketing, you've mentioned... Um, uh, inspiration and mood boards. But once you get the inspiration you need, once you get all the creative juices flowing, sort of, uh, how much current state of AI is of use to you as a product designer? Not much. Okay. <laughs> because the CAD type of designing stuff of, or CAD grade modeling uh, requires a lot of technical knowledge. And that technical knowledge has to be uh, put into fresh never existing, never been seen before forms. So I think this is the um, kind of struggle for AI at this moment because we are uh, fitting it with what's been already done and sometimes we are, we are working with uh, products that uh, have been never existing. For example, new types of medical stuff that are not very intuitive to interpret it uh, while you look at them. So mm -hmm. um, I think this is something uh, in the making. I think it will happen uh, in in the future, but it's still on the developing phase, I believe. Yeah, I uh, I recently tried to describe a picture of um, a medical device that we designed some time ago, and uh, the result was not that great. I I yet uh, well, I still have to try um, the newest Chat GPT because uh, they actually uh, are claiming that it it's really good at describing what it what it does see and. Uh, at interpreting this. What do you mean that the result that you received wasn't good? Well, imagine if I showed you a, a product uh, which already exists, but uh, you still would do you, you would you wouldn't be able to know its function just uh, based on its look. Okay, that's why it's really hard to describe something. It's yeah. even hard for a human, and not to mention an AI. Uh, okay, so it's like when a real person grabs something and says, "What is it? What does it do?" Yeah. That's the same problem for AI. That's right. Uh, it deals with something it ne it has never seen, and uh, it's well having simply a hard time trying to even guess what it is because the guess was far from uh, yeah. well accurate. Well, this must be especially useless when it comes <laughs> to developing things that are yeah. novel, new. Yeah, so it's, uh, well, the other way around when you expect um, highly imaginative work, it's still something that I see that the AI is struggling with. Uh, I guess it's really hard to generate something just from a text prompt. Uh, the best results that I got was mixing a text prompt with an image and then trying to reach some kind yeah. of um, level of, uh, I don't know, remixing and uh, trying to use it as a starting point for, uh, evo well, evolution for this artwork. But yeah, it's it's a tool. That's what it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are always uh, falling into uh, that uh, chase with that the tools because we we kind of know what we want to uh, reach, the, mm -hmm. the what we want to have as an end result. And it's uh, quite tough sometimes to uh, talk it through with AI, with prompts and stuff to, to make it happen. Sometimes hard to talk to a person. <laughs> yeah, sometimes hard to talk to a person, yeah. <laughs> It so, would be nice if we had prompts for people, like you could test different prompts. Understand me. To better communicate with a yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how how important maybe it is, you think, for 
um, designers uh, to learn to use prompts correctly nowadays. Hmm. Is it important or not so much? Language always been important. <laughs> yeah, I it, it's a skill because uh, you might as well uh, don't have, I don't know, a, a skill for uh, 3D modeling and you will simply, well, uh, be not good at it. So I guess it works the same with uh, prompting AI to generate something. If you cannot um, focus your thoughts and, uh, well, uh, make... Uh, Hmm. Your mind Verbal, verbalize your yeah. idea, then you won't be able to describe it not only to AI, but to another person as well. I guess part of our work, and it's rather a uh, huge part, uh, is trying to get from our clients the information that we need to start working on uh, any kind of project. And uh, I guess I w I'm really wondering whether we could use uh, in some time AI as an assistant to to interview our, our clients to get the most uh, out of them uh, in terms of uh, generating a brief for our project. Or, to, would... or to answer those difficult long emails. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so In a calm manner. <laughs> I see this as a future challenge for AI developers. Maybe it will be like that. We On the one side, we will be using AI. On the other side, the client will be using AI and <laughs> human will be just exchanging the outcomes of We'll be just designing engines. with yeah. AI. <laughs> yeah, both sides will give the prompt. Yeah. Just get it done, just get it done, and the AIs will yeah. do the battling for us. Yeah, and we can, um, well, finally. Just do our work. <laughs> that, just do our work. That's right. <laughs> finally. Um, so, from what you are saying, Generative AI or any sort of AI, for example, using prompts, is a necessity. So you generally should learn its language and should be able to use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. It's not like a gimmick or something, you know, ah, for fun, once in a while, maybe I'll use it. It's something that's here to stay in your in your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe so. Uh, we can see that that uh, also in uh, the tools we are using, because for example, the Photoshop, so the huge software that is very important for graphic de graphic design, mm -hmm. already has uh, implemented uh, AI tools in in, uh, in itself. Mm -hmm. True. It's called uh, generative fill. It's yeah. been, uh, I, th I guess, uh, it's been in beta some, for some time, and now it's uh, in the latest version of Photoshop. And, uh, well, in terms of uh, functionality, you can simply mark uh, part of the um, image and ask Photoshop to generate uh, something. And you need, to, you need to describe it with your words because this is a text prompt that you're actually using in a uh, graphic editor. So that's part of it. Yeah. But in terms of, uh, well, general functionality, it doesn't give the user much control because um, in comparison for instance, to stable diffusion, uh, there is very little control mm -hmm. over um, what is generated. So actually this is, um, uh, let's say, the effects are very random from something completely off what you wanted to, to achieve to, to some good results. But overall, this I guess this is a novelty uh, mm -hmm. for, for the moment. Uh, Adobe has presented just days ago uh, something that they are working on, which changes the Photoshop functionality. Uh, uh, well, it changes the general approach uh, on, on working on, on the uh, workflow in the Photoshop. Uh, they try to uh, get rid of uh, the layers and uh, introduce object working. So the AI will be able to uh, simply select an object that uh, it can see in the picture and replace it with something else. And of course, the the demonstration was perfect and it, it looked yeah. very good, but this is uh, something still, uh, this is a future. So I guess we'll maybe yeah. once that uh, once this podcast is published, maybe we will be able to test it in a beta. Yeah. Okay. So if this is the present, like tools that assist your creative work or can help you make it easier or give you more time for, for your actual work while saving you time somewhere else. What is the future of those tools at your work? I think they can become more dedicated 
catered to the needs of the user. For example, I know that there's one architect studio, uh, Zaha Hadid mm -hmm. Architects, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think they're using uh, AI to create concepts because they learn it their style. So okay, so they fit it with their yeah, they fit it their, designs. Uh, yeah, with their okay. designs. So uh, I think that might be a um, quite useful case in the future. Yeah, they actually uh, claim that they use, I guess, about 10 or 15 percent of the designs that they uh, tend to generate and they use it for their actual work. So I guess this is a good example that this this tool is useful. How do you guys think personally about it? Like you go to a design company mm -hmm. and you know that they sort of skipped 30 or 40 percent of their work by generating something based on their previous designs. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily providing you with an original 100% handmade design. Is this something that will change the value of, of uh, work in, in like studios like you've mentioned? I don't think so, because in, in their case, you kind of come for their significant style. You, you want that styling, you want that look, and I think you want a project that will um, continue that, uh, that styling. So uh, I, I don't. So recently, I have found out that I have some style as well. And <laughs> you find out you have some style. <laughs> so I'm reworking my uh, uh, my things. You're uh, learning the AI. Now that. you're learning your style. <laughs> That's right. So uh, this is an interesting part because the answer to your question is, yeah, we are we are using our knowledge and our past experience when we are designing something new. So obviously, we mm. will. Uh, incorporate our past work into something uh, which is uh, uh, well is, uh, that we create and I guess uh, when as Anita said when you come to, to a studio for a specific effect uh, you might be looking for a specific style as well so I guess that's the answer to this question okay so just to sum up uh, or, or, or for a closing argument do you guys think that Every designer should learn the skill of the tools of using the prompts to be uh, uh, at the frontal wave of new AI tools or should studios hire AI experts that will be sort of leading the innovation in their companies? What's, what's the future and how do you think that you, uh, are AI tools going to change your work significantly or not really? You still need to know what you want to achieve. Yes. <laughs> you still need to know what effect you're aiming for. Uh, so I think that will speed up work, mm -hmm. uh, be a new kind of inspiration, new tools. But I don't think it's going to be like uh, it's going to revolution. revolution that will... right. I guess I I am really actively waiting for a client that will come to us and he will come with a generated concepts uh, using AI. And we'll have really smooth work because, wow, okay, this is a starting point for I, for us. We can then uh, continue working on the specific, uh, let's say, early concepts from our client. That would be something excellent be because he would already, he or she would already have uh, the idea visualized. Generative AI can be a dangerous technology if not used correctly, but I guess you can say the same about a knife or a hammer. But if you're a cook in a kitchen, you need to use knives, just like everyone else. Just make sure you use them responsibly and safely. And you use the right knives for the right jobs. For more discussions on industrial design related topics, visit our YouTube channel where you can find more episodes of Ideology the Industrial Design Podcast.